We've been hearing of more and more people diagnosed with coronavirus over the last few weeks and tragically the increasing number of people dying. It's so easy to lose hope. Many of you may have had family and friends who have been ill. You might have been ill yourself. You may be grieving the loss of a loved one. Even if you haven't had indirect experience of the illness yourself, you may be anxious, worried about your health, worried about that of your family, worried about what the future is going to look like when this is all over, worried about the impact on jobs, on finances, or just generally the state of our nation and what the new normal is going to look like. Where is hope? Where is the good that can come from all of this? I've been reflecting on the words of the worship song, Sovereign Over Us, as I've been asking God those exact questions over the last few weeks. And a particular bit of the song that's really spoken to me goes like this. It says, even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good and for your glory. Even in the valley you are faithful. You're working for our good. You're working for our good and for your glory. And those words draw on the promise of what St Paul writes in Romans, where he says, we know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And those words also draw on how Joseph reacts to his brothers in Genesis, where they're reunited in Egypt. And Joseph says to them, even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good. Is COVID-19 being turned for good? Are we seeing it being used for God's glory? Well, my beacon of hope is that I'm working from home now as many others have been over the last few weeks. So I'm not travelling to my office in London, I'm not going around the country like I would have been if things were normal. Instead, I'm home with my wife, with my children, and we're spending much more time together than we otherwise would have done. And it means we're not rushing from place to place, from one thing to another. We have this amazing gift of time to be, to rest, to pause. Across our country, we're seeing people come together in support of our NHS and in support of other key workers. We're on our doorsteps on Thursday evenings, clapping for our carers. We've seen hundreds of thousands of people volunteer their time and skills to help those who are helping others. We're seeing the generosity of theatres and artists who are broadcasting their productions for free, making them accessible right into our living rooms so that people who might never be able to afford or have opportunity to go to theatres and concert venues to enjoy these performances. We're seeing creativity unleashed as local small businesses come up with new ways to serve their communities. Our focus for Lent was on the environment and climate change. And I just wonder what impact this reduction in air travel and car journeys is having on the pollution levels. Churches have become much more accessible to those who would never walk through the doors of a formidable, intimidating building. But those people may be quite happy to click a link on YouTube to join in with a time of worship. All these things are glimpses. They're glimpses of goodness emerging from tragedy. And of course they don't lessen our sadness and sorrow but they are a foretaste of the promises in scripture that God will turn our sorrow and suffering on its head. The beauty flashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning that Isaiah talks about. We have the psalmist declaring that God has turned my mourning into dancing, he has lifted my sorrows. During this season where we celebrate Jesus rising from the tomb, we know that, to quote a couple more lines from the same song, God is not only reigning high above the heavens, but that he is also reaching down in endless grace. We might not understand this side of heaven why coronavirus was allowed to happen, but what we do know is that the enemy has been defeated. God has not forgotten us. He is with us and he is faithful.